Welcome, everybody. Um, we are really excited that you guys uh, have signed up for this webinar. Um, we've got a lot of exciting things that uh, uh, we want to show you and also talk about some of the things that's uh, on our roadmap for the next couple of months. So without any further ado, let's get started and let's look at the new features that we released in May. So in the first early part of May, we uh, did release some new items, uh, new enhancements to both Engage and Web Ministry Tools. And so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna demonstrate those new enhancements. You might have already found some and have been playing with them, that's great. After we get through the demonstration part, then we're gonna turn our attention to what's on our active, what's under active development right now. We're gonna give you a little peek into our crystal ball to see where we wanna take uh, Engage, but also we wanna listen to you. We wanna hear what you want. And that will be how we round out our day to day by going through and looking at the, uh, uh, going and doing some Q and A. So what did we release in May? Well, one of the things that was added was on your mobile devices now, if a person goes to your Engage URL, the first thing they're gonna see is they're gonna see this uh, invitation to add Engage to your home screen. We'll take a look at that, show you how that works on both iOS and Android. We also made some modifications to our, I guess, landing page. There are times if you don't put in the proper uh, URL, you don't have the proper slug as we call it after the uh, engage.saran.com slash after the slash we call it a slug and if you don't put you don't put in a slug it goes to a landing page and we've made a lot of enhancements to that it's much more versatile we'll show you that we're also going to look at giving history and the enhancements we've made there and then we'll show you some of the optimizations and improvements that we've made overall in the program uh, and then finally we'll look at an engaged flyer. In our April webinar, we had someone ask us if they would, if, if we would create a PDF document that could be used by you all to uh, promote Engage. And Chris has done that and we've got it uh, ready on our website. And so uh, it's available, take a look. And, uh, and then after we do that, we're gonna go in and look at uh, what's on the for the future. So right now what we want to do is kind of switch gears and we want to, uh, I'm going to switch screens. All right, so you should be seeing my phone. See screen mirroring, there you go. There we go. So, all right, so I'm in Safari here and I'm going to go to engage dot saran dot com. FCC and go. All right, so now on the <clears throat> in iOS, you see at the bottom there's this uh, little overlay that says add an engage icon for easy access on your home screen. So it says tap that little icon at the bottom. So we clap, we tap, we just touch that item at the bottom there. It brings up a sheet, and then you scroll down in the sheet until you see add to home screen and you touch that it gives you the opportunity if you want to give it a different name and i'm just going to leave it as engage and then click on add and now you can see in my uh, on my home screen there is the engage icon and if i tap that it brings me right up to the login screen where i can log in okay so that's the way it works um, we will Get back to sharing screen here. All right, so adding, <clears throat> adding Engage to the home screen. Now, an another thing that we've done is we've, uh, we've made some uh, enhancements to our landing page. I'm sure that there have been times that you've seen something like this. Uh, you've put in a, what you thought was the Engage URL and you got this window has CDM plus documentation and DonorWorks documentation. 
Well, now you won't see that anymore because if you don't put in the correct URL, what you're gonna see is something like this. Okay, and so all I've done here is you, if you notice, I have engage.saran.com, but I didn't put a slug in. And so it just brings me to this landing page where I can now search for my organization. So let's just take, for instance, uh, the church that I'm gonna be working with is First Community. And so I start typing some and there that church pops up. Now let's back that out for a second and let me type in mm, Baptist, since I'm Baptist. Now I see a list of all of our churches that are Baptist churches that have engaged and they have an engaged slug and I can go to those. And, and so if I wanted to go and give to First Baptist Church in Montgomery, New York, I could click on it and I could give a gift, all right? This is just a very fast way now for your members to be able to find your Engage account if they forget the URL sl slug. So if I go back here, let's just, uh, let's just do something like that. Let's, uh, let's do Methodist. So Desert Springs United Methodist. So if I go there, brings up Desert Springs login. Okay, I don't have a login there, but watch what happens when I go back to just this. Now I see them under recently visited organizations. So I can come down here now and let's say, Christian, well, it'd be good if I could type. And if I go to Centerpoint Christian in Lexington, and then I go back. And let me type that back. Oh, wrong one. Now you can see that I see both of the churches that I visited uh, in the recently visited area. So, we hope this is gonna be a very positive thing for you, but we also know that uh, some of you may not want your church included in the list. And so this is something that you can opt out of. If you log into your web ministry tools and you go to engage, there is now this choice here called list my organization when searching for organizations on engage.saran.com. Right now, I've got this checked. Let me uncheck that. Click Save. Let's go back to Engage. And let me reload that page. And now let me look for First Community. Now First Community does not list out when I do the search. And so, so now if you don't want your church to be listed in that, that's fine. You have an option to opt out of that. Okay. And so we'll go back in here. We'll reload this. And then there's First Community. And that brings us to that. So that is what, <clears throat> that's our first thing that we, uh, we want to look at within Engage of uh, the ability, uh, the organizational search window, which is now like the new landing page. Well, the next thing we want to look at is changes we made in giving history. And so I need to log in and, and we're going to put in and so now I've logged in as Mary Jo and I'll go up under the application menu because what I want to do is get into the giving area. I'm right now in the membership area, the blue area is membership. And if I go to giving, shows me I have three giving funds that I could make gifts to. And I go back to the application menu and go down to giving history. <coughs> now giving history has been really updated a lot. 
one of the first things that you must know is now Giving History is showing all of giving, whether or not they gave online or not. So this is going to show anything that was given, you know, in person as a check, a cash. Um, they mail it in. However, you enter it. If you entered it manually in this through CDM Plus, it's going to show in their giving history now. In addition, we've also made it easier to maneuver and be able to see things by paginating this window. So in this case, you can see we're showing the first 25 items. And now you have some navigation buttons here that I can click and go to the next page. And I see the rest of my 30 on this page. So it's really quick. Also, if you have if you've been if someone's been at your church for a long time and you they have a lot of giving and they have multiple pages, they could just come in here and choose the page they want to go to. But let's, uh, so as you see, we have this nice um, long list of giving with the navigation, but now you also have a, a means of searching. And so I can come in here and I can say, I want to find all the gifts that were made in 2018 and see how quickly it will list out those items. And we'll go like to, I want to see all the credit card items. There's credit card. It's almost instantaneous once I start to type. If I type just check there, all of those, all right, showed up almost instantaneously. So not only is did we make this easier for you to use, we've also made it a lot faster to use. And in addition, not only do you can you search, you can also sort this table any way you want. Uh, when you first go into this, uh, into this page, it's going to be sorted by gift date descending. Okay, so May 7th, 2020 down to 2018. I can also click on any of these column headings and I can sort by those. So like if I want to sort the, the total amounts, I can sort the total amount and I click it one time and now it's in ascending order. I click it another time, now, now it goes to descending order. I can also search on payment methods. I mean, uh, sort on payment methods as well as events. So any of those columns you can sort on except for details. But what are details? Well, let's say you we are looking, we look at a 2018 gift and we see this $400 gift here, Sunday evening worship said, what is that? I don't know, what did I give to? Well, now I can click on details and now it shows me the details here, and then it tells me the fund and the amount that was given to that fund. And if it was a memorial designee uh, applied, you would see that here as well. So you now have a way for your people to see detailed information of all of their giving online through Engage. We, we really hope that that's going to be uh, beneficial to your members. Now, before I get away from the giving area though, something that is not part of our May release, but something that we did release uh, earlier this year is scheduled gifts. Now, scheduled gifts, there's a lot of times that you need to update your, um, your uh, credit card information, your, uh, your expiration date, whatever. And you always, before you would have to go in and cancel it and put in a new account. Now you don't have to do that. So, um, but I'm talking about accounts, but if you had to change, I'm sorry, if you wanted to change the schedule of your gift, you could come in and change that. You can also, we've also added the ability to change the accounts and I'll show you that too. But here I have three scheduled gifts that have been set up. And here in this one that's quarterly by Mary Jo, um, I can look at the details again and say, what, is, what did I give to? And that was to needy families. All right, we'll just go into Chrome here and go back down to giving. Scheduled gifts. All right, so here's scheduled gifts. And we'll come back and click on this. 
Okay, there we go. So now this is the GIF that we set up. And in, this, in, in the editing portion of scheduled GIFs, I can change any of this. I can change the amount. I can change the frequency. I can change start date if the start date is not passed yet, okay? And end dates and so forth. I can even change what funds that I'm gonna give them to. So this, uh, give my money to. So this is a very handy way for your people to be able to go in and make modifications and not have to delete and create new ones. Like I said, also, you can go into payment methods, which used to be called accounts, and that's a, one of our uh, uh, optimizations and enhancements that we made. And so now I'm looking at Mary Jo's Visa card. Let's say the expiration date is passed. So I can click on edit now. Now here's a very important thing to recognize. It says at the top, you may only edit a credit card account to have the same card type. So if you have Visa card in here, you can't change this to a MasterCard. You would have to put in a new payment method for the MasterCard. But I can come in here now and let's say my address changed, I could change the address. Uh, I could put in the CFB and then change this year to now, let's say 27 and click submit changes. Ah, has to have, there we go. I didn't have the right numbers. And so now this has been updated and whatever those, whatever that credit, that payment type was applied, applied to on a scheduled gift, it's now been updated as well. So they, if you have a credit card that's associated with a scheduled gift, they don't have to, uh, they don't have to delete their scheduled gift and they don't have to delete their uh, payment method anymore. All they have to do is edit the payment method and it'll update the scheduled gift. So. We believe that's a very handy. This is something that a lot of you have asked for. And so we've had that since well, first around the first of the year. So now let's talk about some optimizations. I don't know if you all have really seen this in your work uh, with Engage, but the speed of Engage has been greatly enhanced in the logging in as well as in the searching and viewing of groups. So if I go back to people, and actually I'm gonna log out of this person, and I wanna get back, I wanna get into another person I have in here. And so I know Mark has part of a lot of groups. And so he's got a lot of people, he wants to know he wants to find a friend of his that's in this. So he wants to find John. So he starts typing J-O-H, and now it's gonna find everybody in all of his groups that have J-O-H in their name. I could also do this, say, let's find all the Smiths. And you can see it's finding it pretty quickly and not only finding it, but it's also displaying the photos. Now, where you see <clears throat> where you see this with the photos is if I select this group called all individuals. This has over 200 names in our database. And so there's 200 names that just populated like that. Scroll down through there and you'll see that the um, photos come in relatively quickly. And just as I scroll down, no lag, it's just there. And then boom, the photos show. So, we're really excited about this. We, we think this speed is really going to help your members be able to use uh, Engage with their groups or as an online directory. Uh, so we hope this will help you. In addition to the speed enhancements there, we've also made it faster if you just are working in the profile and looking at people's information. So like if I'm in a family and I want to look at Andrea's information, it pulls up Andrea's now, and I can see all of her information here. And then I can then just keep drilling down into other people. Also, I could do the same thing if I go to my groups. And let's say I want to see, well, who, who actually is in 
the worship group, worship committee with me. Well, here they are. I want to see Bill. I want to get Bill's phone number. And there it is. And I can click on that and <clears throat> I can make a call if I have a phone attached to my uh, computer or if I was using this on a mobile device like my iPhone, it would just pop up and say, do you want to call Bill? And so very handy here. Now things are much faster and we're going to be improving that even more as the time, as the uh, year progresses. Well, with that, that's a, a quick overview of what we have, um, have already released in May. So we want to move now to looking at what, uh, what we have in the works over the next few months. Now, we're going to give you a, a glimpse into our crystal ball here, okay, but uh, in a few minutes. But, you know, oh, I forgot. We also have improvements here. Uh, there's some other improvements that were made. Um, there are times that members, when they're creating their accounts, uh, would accidentally put in uh, a trailing space or a space at the beginning of their usernames. And then when they would enter in that username, the space may not be present. Well, what we've done now is we're able to handle those usernames with a trailing space. And even those that might have a percentage character embedded into the, the uh, username. We've also uh, modified our emails that you get uh, for resetting your password codes and try to provide a little clearer instructions in that way. Um, as I said, when we were looking at uh, the giving area, we have made a change in the terminology uh, accounts where you set up your credit card or ACH information is now called payment methods. And so we wanted to keep things from getting too confusing uh, because you could have an engage account and then you'd have an, an account that was really associated with a payment. And so payment methods just made more sense for us to be able to clear those things through. And then the last thing we've done is in the um, giver emails for those who have set up a scheduled gift, when that gift is fires off and they get an email that uh, or, or not when they set up that gift and they get the email saying this is the gift that you just scheduled there'll be a button at the bottom now that says manage your gift and that button if they click it it'll take them right to engage where they can log in and they can start making changes to their um, scheduled gifts so we think that would be another way to greatly improve your members user experience with engage and finally, what we want to do uh, is look at this engage flyer. Like I said, back in April at our AMA meeting, some, uh, one of the people there asked if we would create a flyer that you all could use. And so Chris has done that. And in this flyer, it is a PDF uh, download from our site. And you go to docs.cdmplus.com and you'll be able to get it. That, along, that link, along with the links for this recording, will be in uh, an email that we send out, send out after uh, this webinar. And so you'll be, able to see, you'll be able to get that link. I believe the link was already, it might have already been included in some other uh, uh, correspondence we've had with you as well. But uh, in this flyer, you can then print, you can, Take this area right here where it says engage.saran.com and you could edit that and you could put your slug. So like for me, I would put FCC right after that slash there. And then once you have that, you can then uh, print those out or email them to your members that are wanting to get on Engage and they'll be able to get some video instruction um, going to our website, they'll be able to learn how to create an Engage account, submit a gift, and so forth.
Harry, I just want to jump in and say I went ahead and dropped the direct link to where you can find that in the documentation site. It's in the chat box. All if right. If you want to click over there and download it. Perfect. So if you want to see the you want to see that, you can just click on the link that Chris just put in the chat. Perfect, Chris. Thank you. So let's look at what we have under active development. So now we're hoping, we're planning that this, the, the things that I'm going to be talking about here, uh, we hope to release this in early June. Um, but, you know, that, that's what our plan, and we hope that'll happen. So what are we looking at being able to provide then? Well, one of the things that we've heard is that, that people want us to expose the fees on contribution reports and records. And so we're going to add that capability to <laughs> CDM Plus. One of the big things that'll be coming, and it's going these this is going to, these things are going to require you to be on CDM Plus 11.1 beta, is that we're going to uh, have the ability to merge giving units, including recurring gifts. So <clears throat> what this is is if you have situ you have situations where your members forget that they've created an Engage account with a specific uh, email address, and then they go in and create another one, and now you have duplicate records. So what we're going to do is make it easier for you in being able to merge this information. Another thing we're doing is providing more consistent look with recurring emails, and what that means is right now the emails that you, your people receive once a recurring or scheduled gift fires it looks different than the initial email that they receive and that is something that we want to change we want to be able to, for them to be able to know exactly what it is that they're that it just happened you know it's a gift it was for this amount to this fund and so forth so it'll be a detailed item where they'll be able to understand what uh, just <laughs> what just happened if you will uh, when they see that, because now that scheduled gift is fired. Uh, another one we're going to do is we're going to make improvements in processing pending contributions, as well as deposit processing. And we want to be able to reverse the gifts and or payments when a failure occurs. You know, right now, if a failure occurs, the gifts within CDM Plus that have been created are not reversed and neither are the payments. They just are there and you have to, you know, you have to do something with them. What we want to be able to do is have all of that happen when we know that there's a failure and then notify that giver and uh, giver or payer and the staff members that this has occurred. Okay. Now, this isn't engage, but wanted to at least let you know what's you know some of the things that are happening here in the mobile space. So under CDM Plus Mobile, which is not engage, we have a beta that's available right now, and you can call support and get access to that beta. What that beta includes is mobile receipts, and this is going to give your staff the ability to take, take a screenshot of their receipts when they're out, enter in the information for that receipt, the cost, the, all of those, those things, and then submit them and an invoice would be automatically created in CDM Plus once they submit it. So we think that's really going to be a uh, very um, sought out for <laughs> it's it's been one that we've heard a lot for a lot of requests for so we hope that you'll be interested in this and if you are just give support a call let them know and we'll get you on the beta list you also need to be in cdm plus 11.1 .1 beta as well just to let you know um, and then the other thing that we've done just like we've done in engage is there's going to be speed improvements across all of CDM Plus Mobile. Uh, we're putting a lot of active development in that right as we speak. 
So that's early June, what we're, hope, what we're hoping to be able to uh, ship in early June. But now we have some things that's coming. What's next after that? So looking out towards end of July, that's our hope, we want to be able to include a report that you could print within CDM Plus of upcoming and recently expired credit cards. All right, there's a lot of folks that want to, you know, be able to send this at, you know, be able to know whose credit cards are going to be uh, expired. Another thing is we're going to disable all email notifications from stewardship technology. All notifications to your givers and payers will be from Engage, not from stewardship. There's going to be even more speed enhancements that we're working on. We'll have distinct payment methods for ACH and credit cards. So now instead of just the one payment method that you see in the Engage giving setup, now you'll have two, one for the credit card and one for ACH. And then we'll include a, a, an ability to automatically log out of Engage after a time of in a, inactivity, okay? We're also going to ship, we want to ship a version of text giving that allows you to give to multiple funds in a single text message. We're going to add organization logos to the email notifications that your people receive, as well as have a, the organization logo in the header portion of Engage once they log in. We're going to improve refunding transactions. So what we'll do, what we're hoping to do in that area is add offsetting gifts and payments once a refund has been submitted, notify the payer and staff of the refund, and then process the refund through deposit processing. We're also in the, uh, for, we're gonna be in the stages of moving the web ministry tool features all into Engage so that there's not a web ministry tool or Engage, it's just Engage. We're going to, uh, Add the add having a separate asset for giving and payments and direct deposit payroll. And then we finally we will uh, hope to include the ability for the staff to receive the pa password reset request when you're creating the accounts for your members. So like if you're on the online giving tab within giving units you'll be able to receive that uh, password request and not have to be concerned about your giver having to go through that process. But that's not it. There's still more to come. And what we've got is some things that we're just still in the process of thinking through and planning through. So what we wanna do is find a way to have fewer duplicate records when givers make a new account. So we want to find some ways of that we could have CDM Plus check these different ones that are coming in and make sure that they can recognize those as being the same giver and then you would be able to merge them easily rather than always you know, have it, it already recognize it. it would it, it wouldn't even create a new account. It would say, I know who this is. And so that way we can reduce the number of duplicate records. We also uh, are going to uh, look at having the ability of reprinting direct deposit processing reports. And so now what we wanna do is turn, to, turn it over to Q&A and see what kind of questions we have. All right. Thank you, Terry. Uh, let me scroll up here and see where we are. Bob Sander, uh, did you have a question for us? Yes. Um, we're using Engage for directory uh, access, and right now I've created two groups that aren't the, the, quite the group list, the list that I want. 
I need to have a, I don't know how to create a new group that has a the correct list of names in it. Do I have to go through web ministry tools to create a group? I forget how that was done. I had a tech support person do that with me and I can't remember what was all done. Yeah. Y'all aren't seeing this, so let me switch. Okay, so, all right, so I'm in CDM Plus now, and so I'll go into Master Coding System. Keeps going over to the other screen. All right, so if I come here in Master Coding, go to Groups, and go to Individual, I can set up a group and then just call this uh, Online Directory. Actually, that would not be the best way of doing it. Um, let's just do this. Now you could do that, but I would rather do it by something like uh, church groups and then add online directory here. And if I close that, now I can go into um, membership, individual list maintenance, bring this over, come over here to church groups, and then select online directory. And then I can click show all. And then if I want, if I need to select them all, I select all of them and then just click transfer selected and save. And now I've taken all the individuals in my CDM plus database and I've put them into the online directory. You don't have to do that. You can choose, you know, one in, you know one at one at a time until you get all of the people on there in that particular gotcha. directory. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's very helpful. Good. Thank you. Appreciate it. We have Rita. Hello. Hey, Rita. Do you have a question for us? I had a few questions, um, but my uh, first one is really on the giving fund. I was just playing around with that on CDM. You you had mentioned that. You now have some, I think, um, when, when someone has a gift, they can see their history or manage their gift, I think you said. Um, and that was a great improvement because I've always wanted to be able to go in and see you know, when they started the gift, when it ends. I noticed improvements. What I didn't see is I see a start date, but I don't see an end date on the gift. And that was one thing that always is confusing because some people accidentally choose give indefinitely, and we can't yep. tell if they've done that from this. So I'm hoping you can add that to the kind of end date or say indefinite, is that possible? Do you know what I'm, for the scheduled gifts? Yeah, so what you're, I think what you're saying here is, let me bring this up and I'll do edit to get into it. Yeah, and the edit doesn't seem to be working either, as far as I could tell, at least mine aren't working. So were you getting what I was seeing where it just shows <laughs> it didn't show anything so yeah that's see, what i'm now, getting if you edit. if you look at the if you edit the gift you should see the start date and the end date okay i was wondering that but my edit something maybe is wrong because all i see is when it says edit gifts it says funds and that i can't click on it and then nothing else is available for me to yeah, do you're anything. getting what i what i saw initially um one of the things to try at least if you are you is try to go over and use Chrome, um, Google Chrome for right now. Uh, we're gonna, I've, I found this out just before the meeting about this. And so on Safari, it'll be a bug. Okay. What's that? Are, it's which, on Safari, it's an issue right now? Yes. Okay, all right, okay. But it would be nice not to have to edit it and be able to see the details, but that's just a suggestion. My, my question on the um, um, giving, history as well, that tab, which I love the fact that you've added all the gifts and checks and stuff, but our donors really want to know how they're doing against their pledge. Is that something you're gonna be adding to those, that giving history, or is that just not possible for them to see that? Alex? Yeah, Alex. so, yeah, so we, we've had lots of requests to, to add pledges, both to track um, where you are with your pledge and be able to submit pledges online. Um, I am, cautiously optimistic that we would have that feature live um, sort of ahead of the fall when stewardship season really kicks in. Uh, it's something I'd very much like to build. Um, 
uh, once we kind of get some of these other pieces in place. Oh, so perfect. that is on sort of the the medium term development uh, roadmap. Okay, fantastic. And then I just have two more questions. My my next one is really about you know the one thing that you've also addressed is these duplicate accounts, which is really plaguing us right now, as since we started the text to give, because that's really the big culprit of creating multiple accounts. Um, but until you get some kind of a fix, what I thought might be easy is if there was a place, maybe you can just point me to it, where we could download or print a report that shows all new accounts that were created, let's say for the last month, and then we could then go one by one and make sure those aren't duplicates. Um, or do we have some other method to do that? Hmm. I could jump in yeah. and answer that, uh, how I handle it. Yeah. Okay. So how I handle it is I have our settings set to send me an email anytime a new account, new account is created. Ah, okay. And so as soon as I get that email, I log on and see if we already have that person in our database. Okay. okay. And then I immediately transfer their login to the account that we previously had. Okay. Now it gets tricky with the giving account because you also have to go in and transfer that. So I have to transfer the home record, the, um, or the address record, the individual record and the given account. So it's, it's a pain, but because I get that email, anytime a new account is created, I can track it and I do it immediately. Okay. Because we're going to have to do it anyway. So we're going to have to go through that pain until the fix comes through. Right. But that's a great idea. Where do yeah. we select that? Is the so you're going to go into web ministry tools mm -hmm. and go to engage giving. Mm -hmm. And then you want to, right here, you want to enter in the email addresses of the people that you want. And you can have more than one. All you do is separate them by a, with a comma. For who will receive the email you're saying. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Terry, two things. Where you're showing right here is specifically for notifications of new gifts. Right. Uh, in notifications for new accounts being created, or if somebody makes an edit. Oh, that's uh, right. It's over here in Engage. Individual whatnot, that's that's there on this Engage tab. It's under, yeah, you want to make sure that you, if you're using Engage Giving and Engage, that you have staff email addresses under both Engage and Engage Giving. Okay, for both. Okay, fantastic. The, I'm sorry. the other thing you can do if you want to sort of do an audit of records that have come in, um, Terry, if you'd go back into CDM Plus and pull up individual records um, while you're doing this, I'll mention this also works for address or giving unit or, or even the gifts themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but if you go ahead and uh, go into the find at the top there and drop down the find fields, mm -hmm. uh, you can start looking for a field called source. Okay. And source uh, on the individual there, uh, you can set that to be uh, begins with and just start type it. You can just put engage. Okay. And that's going to show you. Go ahead and click find there, Terry. All the records that were created, uh, excuse me, from engage. And can we put a date limit on a date time for that? Yeah, you could yeah. do an advanced find at that point. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. All right, we'll do that. And then, and then my last question is, um, is stewardship the only processor we can use? I, I, I find that their fees are really exorbitant and I'd love to move to a different processor. But um, is, that, is that possible? Uh, no, right now we work exclusively with stewardship. We're actually working with them to uh, make some adjustments to the fee schedule. I don't have anything I can announce right now, but that is something we're actively looking at. Oh, okay. Um, what I can tell you is that uh, in the next beta of CDM Plus 11.1, uh, you'll be able to, to show the fees directly on the contributions um, and, uh, and you can sort of see what those are coming through. Um, yeah, I don't want to show it to our members. I hope that's optional. But I find I have the fee schedule and I'll tell you that every transaction we have, they charge more than the fee schedule. It seems like it's not um, cons. It, they, I just talked to them and they said that, you know, if the credit card company charges more, the processor, than the fee schedule, this is, I guess, a starting point. You know, and when, if you work with Square or PayPal, their fees are very standard. You don't have all this changes. It's correct. Yeah. Yep. And they're uh, much higher too. <laughs> yeah. So, so I would, I would just ask that you kind of sit tight on that and okay. hopefully we'll have something to announce in the next month or two. Oh, that would be fantastic. Cause I am actually considering leaving engage with, because of this processor, it is so expensive. And the more that we're moving our big gifts, I mean, we have big donors now that are starting to switch to, you know, pay 
credit cards, it's killing us. You know? um, so thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I want to thank our other user that jumped in and helped answer some of that, yes. share their experience. <laughs> um, all right. Immaculate uh, Hart, do you have a question? Yes, I do. I have a couple questions. First, to the um, caller before me, our finance council examined the fees from stewardship technology too. Um, and we have some big givers who give by credit card, especially at our big fundraiser dinner. And their feeling is it, it takes money to make money. <laughs> and that's kind of the cost to doing business these days. So for us, we're not just paying the credit card fee, we're paying the convenience of having it post directly to CDM. And we're not creating new giving records. So there's more accuracy um, guaranteed. You're not entering stuff all the time. So that's, I mean, that's just our feeling, but um, I think if you think about that, you'll, you'll um, understand why we feel that way. Um, I have a couple questions. Um, in our area of the country, we have a lot of pastors who are responsible for more than one church, and they're forced to um, have to decide which church they want to access on their mobile app. And um, is there any plan to give an ability to access two data files or be able to install two mobile apps? Um, also, um, I want to know if there are any plans to be able to enlarge the individual windows, such as the family address record. We've got these huge monitors and little tiny um, family address record windows. It looks kind of silly and it would certainly help after a long day of working on the computer if I could make it bigger. Um, and my third thing is, um, can, is there a way to get around um, a giver that wants to give through Engage but doesn't have an email? Um, I've been using the parish email address for those people. Is there a better way to do that? Thanks. All right, hey Mary, uh, thank, thanks for your, your positive comments, especially at the beginning there. Um, so the three questions I have down are multiple um, uh, provisions through mobile, uh, screen yep. size, and then givers without uh, an email address. Correct. Um, so yes, there, there's at, we absolutely have uh, plans to, to make it easy to switch between different provisions in CDM Plus mobile. Um, one thing you, you might uh, suggest is sort of a temporary workaround. It's, it's a little clunky, um, but, the, um, but the, uh, uh, a, a decent workaround is um, if you need to resend the, the, uh, the, the user the email, that sort of gets them connected. If you go to administration and mobile and send that email, and there's a link in there uh, that says, you know, tap, click here to, to provision this device. If they save that link, if they save both of those links, like in a notes document or something like that, if you go back and at any time, if you access that link, it'll switch mobile to whatever uh, provision it came from. So, okay. um, you know, what, what we're looking at doing is, is adding into mobile an easy way to sort of uh, maybe from the login screen to swipe left and right and navigate between different provisions. Yeah. Um, but for now, they could at least do that, and not have to just pick one. Um, okay. the, the screen size question is also a very good one. Um, that's something that I can't say we're going to do instantly because a lot of these windows are sort of um, laid out by hand and not really designed to be responsive. But we're gradually working to, to enhance uh, parts of the, the program so they could be resized. So, for example, what Terry's showing you right there, that whole sidebar on the left, uh, the tabs across the the middle and the list at the top would all be very easily resizable. Um, so those are some uh, some uh, uh, pieces that we're working on. Um, for now, it's it's just uh, probably a, a question of finding the best balance between the resolution on your screen and the size of the windows. Um, but that's something we've heard uh, loud and clear, and it's a it's a it's a it's a big knot to untangle. But we are gradually working towards it. I appreciate um, it. 
You're welcome. Uh, and then uh, for givers without emails, um, I want to uh, make sure I understand exactly. So, so you have somebody that doesn't does not have an email address, and yet they want to make a gift. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, do you expect that they would have a cell phone, like a mobile phone? No, I no. I'm thinking of a couple of them in particular. They have they have landlines, but they don't even have answering machines. Gotcha. Uh, would they be interested in just giving? Uh, would, would would are they wanting to just give you a credit card or their their you know bank bank account routing number over the phone for you to make? Well, they want to set yeah. And um, what happens it, when I have one time gifts? I enter them in through the web ministry tools. But um, can you set up a recurring gift there? Yeah. So, so essentially, and, and one of the points that uh, Terry had on one of his slides, um, you know, you're able to go in and, and create a username and access the, uh, what was the online giving tab and giving unit records. And that's been renamed just to engage in 11.1. Um, and that actually lets you from within CDM plus uh, sort of with your back office uh, login, this allows you to go in and access uh, some of these online giving. Um, the yeah. trick is when you set up that username, uh, it's going to send an email to that person uh, to reset their password. So you have to have an email on file. Yeah. Um, and what we're planning to add is when you go to add that username and it asks for the email, uh, one of the options will be your email address pulled from your user record in CDM Plus. So you can just have it emailed directly to you. Uh, yeah. So that'll make it very easy to set up that login. All righty. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, thank you very much. Um, Ruth, do you have a question for us? Yes, I do. Um, I am thrilled with the enhancements that have been made to engage, but I need to wait. I, I'm wondering if you have a recommendation on how to communicate that to my congregation who's using it and, and those who, who aren't using it saying, well, look, it's, it's new and improved and a little bit better and it'd be a whole lot easier to use. Um, and the second question you'll come across from me somewhere later in this is, I also want to be able to opt out of showing the fees on contribution records. Um, so is there a way to do that? Yeah, I can answer both of those. Um, so so uh, Terry, would you mind pulling up the, the documentation site in your browser there? Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're gradually building out an updated uh, documentation site that's um, much more searchable current information and so on. Um, but one of the, when we sent the email blast last week, sort of saying, hey, we've got new features, uh, there was a link to that news item right there. Actually, Terry, if you go back uh, to that news item right at the top. Um, and this is, a, uh, this is a blog post that kind of walks you through piece by piece uh, all the pieces that we've added uh, to Engage. Now, some of these make a lot of sense for your members. Uh, some of them are, are make more sense for you sort of in the back office. Um, you know, part of a lot of these were designed to be fairly uh, instantly usable. You know, so if you go to navigate to engage, it pops up and tells you how to add that to your home screen. Uh, if you accidentally get to justengage.saran.com, it's pretty clear you just uh, start typing the search. Um, so, so there, there is some detail here you can point people to. Um, is, is there a particular uh, feature, whether it's maybe the, the giving history enhancements or something, uh, that would be, would be helpful um, for us to put together a, maybe a, a, a more user-friendly and end, end user-facing video? Is there one that you're seeing? Um, yeah, we've had a lot of comments about the giving history and it being only 12 months. So right, right. The, the fact that, that, that they can now look at every, their entire history sure. um, is going to be it's going to answer about a third of the questions I've been getting. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and and then the, the changes in terminology too. So if I've, I've been working people through setting up accounts mm -hmm. and now it's not an account anymore, it's a right. payment method, which payment I mean, method. sounds to me intuitive, but Definitely, <laughs> I, I, understand. I have a very wide range of sophistication. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Um, Chris, I think that might be, might be a good idea um, for, for this round of updates and also those going forward, if we can put together maybe a, a, a short, um, you know, PDF flyer or do a, a, a short focus video, you know, not as involved as, as a webinar like this um, that people could use to sort of communicate some of those changes. 
Sounds good. I'll make a note of that. All right. Excellent. Yeah. Great. Um, and I'm so sorry. Did you you did you have another question as well? It was about opting out of showing yes, the yes, fees. Yes. Yes. The fees. Um, so so the fees are actually a column uh, that will show up uh, in contribution records. So if you don't add those um, uh, to your results columns there, or if you don't put them on a custom listing, you simply won't see those fees. Okay, so but they're not going to. When I print statements, they won't show either. No, they will not. Okay. No, this is this is just internally. If you're on contribution records, and, and Terry, I'm fairly certain that this isn't in a build yet. Yeah, that's what I was. I was looking to see if it. Yeah, was. Adam. Adam's got it over ready for a build, but it's not quite there yet. Um, but essentially, uh, it's a column that you that you and you, you that the staff can add internally on contribution records to see what the fees were. So this does not uh, it is not exposed in any way to to the giver. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. Let's see, Alex, there's a comment here from Rod Enos. Uh, he's not here, but I'm just going to read anyway. He just commented he'd like to see the memo in the my giving history. Yep. Uh, I've got that on my notes and I chatted Trisha just to confirm that we're currently showing uh, the memorial designee. So if you've linked a gift uh, to a memorial, you'll see that in the giving history. Um, but uh, yeah, we could we could definitely add the add the notes as well if they put something else in there. Awesome. Okay. Um, we'll move on to Brian and Rose Mar Rosemary. Do you have a question? Yeah, sorry, I'm trying to find my question again. <laughs> well, I don't know where it went. You said, has the loading speed been improved when viewing giving units? Oh, so yeah, so when you're in, when you're in CDM desktop um, and you're in giving unit maintenance, if you click on the, I don't remember if it says online or engage, um, if you click on that tab, it it does the little blue dot swirl, uh, and it tends to take quite a long time before that loads. And so I always have to remember to click off that tab if I'm going through multiple give, uh, giving units looking for something, because uh, it just loads too slow. So what? I noticed your other stuff with, en with Engage is loading much quicker, so I was wondering if that was included in the if, if the speed enhancements you did carried over to this exactly where are you in cdm plus um he terry he's on the the engage tab on giving units or or online giving tab um basically uh on giving unit records the tab you oh you saw about that oh okay online giving tab yes so um, there, there may be some enhancements um, that we've made in terms of just what generally gets loaded up when you're logging into Engage that might speed this up some. Um, but I made a note that uh, this is something I want to make sure that we, we pay some special attention to in terms of optimizing. So if it's not, it, it, it's not going to be any slower today than it was uh, you know, two weeks ago. Um, but we can definitely make it uh, faster if that's still running a little slowly. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, I had a question here from Donna, who looks like she dropped off Donna Long. Um, she said, do you need permission from them to view the directory? Yeah, so, yes. so let me, yeah, this is, this is a question we get pretty often in terms of uh, seeing groups and, and online directories and engage. Um, Terry, if you would pull up the, uh, the settings there over in Web Ministry Tools for engage. Um, the rules are, are essentially, um, in Engage, uh, you can see yourself and you can see anyone connected to your address record, so your family members. Um, you can also see uh, any groups that you at the church have turned on to show in Engage. So right here in these Engage settings, only the groups that Terry's putting under selected uh, will show in Engage. And you will only see the group if you are in that group and you will only see the other people in that group. So for example, if I'm not part of the Bible study group, I won't see the Bible study group. But if I am, I'll see everyone else in the Bible study group. So for creating a sort of full church directory, this kind of goes back to the, to the question we had at the, the top of the Q&A. 
uh, it's a great idea to create a group for online directory. Go ahead and add anyone who's interested in being part of that directory, uh, and then they can see everyone else in the online directory. Now, regardless of these settings, um, if the person is marked do not uh, print in CDM Plus, they are not going to show in the directory at all. Uh, so that's automatically excluded. And when you go in to view someone, uh, Terry, if you would go ahead and pull up another individual here, um, you don't get to see quite all the information that you see on your own profile. Uh, so you get to see their contact information unless it is unlisted. If their phone or email is unlisted, it will not show here. Uh, and you can see the other people in their family, uh, but you can only view them if they are in a group that you have in common. Um, so for example, Terry here, he's, he shares groups with Lucy and Bill, but he, he's not in a group with their kids. So he can't see anything about those kids. Uh, so what you're seeing right here is the only thing that, that anyone else in the organization can see about you through Engage. And also, if you noticed, with the person here before, I had all groups selected, and he was a part of all those groups, <laughs> all right? But now, we're only seeing the groups that he's associated with, even though there were more in this list that I had, but now we're seeing just those that he's associated with. Brian and Rosemary, are you there? Yes. Yep. Um, did, did we answer your question? Well, on, on one of the slides you had, it mentioned there were improvements in processing pending contributions. So I was wondering what the improvements were that are yeah. coming. Um, there are some specific ones in terms of, um, you know, we mentioned being able to process a, a, re, a refunded uh, gift pretty easily. Um, those uh, specific line items are to deal with adding some resiliency and uh, some additional validation. Um, mostly they're internal enhancements um, to, to do some better error handling and ensure that, uh, that things go through correctly. Um, mostly just to tighten up some of the internal workings on those windows. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Beverly, did you have a question? Uh, yes, you answered most of my questions. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Uh, you answered most of my questions about the um, online directory and the participant detail and, and how to like have it unlisted or not print. But have either you all or any of your clients come up with a kind of form to kind of get participants permission to say we want, you know, we're agreeable to be in this online directory or um, we're fine if you publish all of this data in our, I mean, our, not data, but details, personal details in it. Um, is there just a simple form that either an editable PDF or suggestion that somebody has on how to get kind of collectively at once um, permission I, from people? Sure, I, I, I can give you a couple of, uh, a couple of things that we have in the works. Um, one is to, to provide some, some nice privacy settings that see people can go in to their own engage and, and determine uh, whether or not they want to be visible or what they want to show. Um, right. And that's something that we're very keen to, to add in. Um, also, we have a, another uh, fairly significant feature in development called Engage Forms, uh, which will allow you to create open-ended forms that actually pull from information in CDM Plus and can then push information back into CDM Plus. So being able to uh, opt in or out of groups um, like an online directory is absolutely something that that technology would handle. Um, so it's still in development, not quite there yet, but that's something that's coming uh, expected that later this year. Um, right. For now, you could, you could definitely uh, sort of uh, hack it a little bit with the registration tool, and let people uh, send in a registration to say, yeah, sign me up for this or take me off of it. Um, okay. The other thing that uh, we'll point out that, that you could do um, is if they're in a, if you're using a, a group to control sort of this online directory, um, that's one thing that you could set up uh, staff, uh, the church there, to be able to manage through CDM Plus Mobile. And they could very easily, if they're talking to someone, go in and either uh, add or remove them from that group right on the fly. Uh, so it's a, a, another option you can use just to, to get that data populated. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Vertina, did you have a question for us? 
Yes, I do. Um, my question is about the texting um, with the mobile um, phone, and it was great for us during this COVID time because we had a lot of messages that we had to send out. However, I had to do everything, you know, on the small phone. We have a piece of software that we use on the daycare side called ProCare, and we can text parents through the computer so it's easier, you know, to do it through the keyboard and with your mouse and get all of them together and just hit send and it's done as a text. Do you foresee that happening for CDM maybe? Absolutely. Yes. Yay. So so this is something we would, we would probably call SMS notices or text notices. And um, the, the idea is that you could send, much like you do an email notice or a letter notice, you could do a text notice um, that would get delivered out um, likely from the same phone number that you use for engaged giving. Um, and uh, people would be able to opt in and out of that. And it would also build onto their sent notice history a list of that communication. Um, so that is 100% in the plans. Um, and I expect that to be coming in the fairly near future. Thank you. You're welcome. Christine, do you have a question? Um, so I'm excited that there's going to be something that makes it super easy to combine duplicate giving records. But um, the way I was told to do it for now is to wait for the contribution to drop, transfer the contribution from the new duplicate record to the old record, then go in and transfer the individual records um, from, from the new giving unit to the old giving unit, make sure the email address is correct, and then go back to the newly formed giving record and delete them. So it's like four steps. Is there is that the best way to do it still? Yes, there's 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 potentially three records you need to to deal with. There's a, a new could be a new giving unit, individual and address. Um, and we're, we're finishing up some, some written instructions on sort of the best way to process that now. Um, the first tool that's in development is being able to simply go into giving you the records, uh, choose two or more givers and merge them all together into one. Uh, and that's going to handle all their online giving and recurring giving as well. Um, yeah. So the recommendation we have is actually to, um, uh, to do the, the giving units uh, first, uh, and then the individual, and then the address record as needed. So we're going that order. But don't you need to transfer the contribution first? As, as part of, yes, as, as part, part of working giving. on the giving unit, yes. Okay, all right. Just want to make sure I was doing it the best way. Yes, yep. Okay, thank you. Diane Pratt, do you have a question? Um, yeah, are we still, we really are struggling with the uh, duplicate um, records and, uh, for online giving, but also I, I put a post there. Um, it's that it would be really nice if we could default the the payment tab that's open first to be that bank uh, card or the bank uh, account tab. Because sometimes on the screen it's actually quite light. Sometimes people I think don't even see that there's another tab there. So uh, I, I I was looking at a gift that came in uh, this week and. It was a 4% fee on it. I was like really surprised. So yeah, I think we're all struggling with this fee situation and we, we are really um, putting out documentation for people to do the ACH if at all possible. We had that request at the AMA, Alex. Yes. And so I, I know there's a story up for that. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at that. Def definitely to make it a little more clear that you can use the, uh, the, the bank account option. Um, so if, yeah, if, you, if you're going right through, it, it takes you straight to that card by default. Yeah, I mean, I can understand why they did that. That's how they get the fees. But um, I, I mean, I'm, we're just, you know, we're just watching that fee, you know, charge, go, you know, being quite significant monthly. So uh, anyway, um, that would be very helpful. And if you're going to do the write up on uh, the best practice of doing the uh, dealing with these reoccurring gifts, I, I was on tech support for um, at least 45 minutes yesterday trying to work out a record that I hadn't uh, that I needed to get fixed. So 
anyway, we just, I'm just, every week I'm actually going through every single day and seeing if there are records that have been duplicated before I process through the, de uh, the deposit processing. And I change them right on the spot, but then I know which ones I got to go fix. So it's taken a lot of time. Okay. Yeah, that's that. Those are those are definitely pieces that we're looking to to streamline. Um, it, it's a little bit of a trade off. Uh, if you go back a few years and engage, um, it wasn't possible for anyone to to sort of create an account for a recurring gift or or anything like that unless they were already in your system with an email. And the 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 comments that we got from people were that, well, that doesn't work because I don't have email addresses for people in my system. I want them to be able to go in and and make gifts and make those recur and make those fire and so on, which is when we added the ability to, to create new accounts. Um, but then the trade-off there, of course, is it's very easy to get duplicates. So that's something we're, we're looking at how we can not just add the tools to make it easier to, to merge the duplicate records, whether they're duplicated through Engage or duplicated from, for some other reason, um, but also the, uh, what we can do to sort of eliminate those duplicates in the first place uh, without risking um, a bad actor getting access to somebody's information. So. Right. I actually wish that um, uh, more of them showed up in pending off uh, pending contributions. And if I saw uh, an alphanumeric uh, giver code, and I know I know that giver, I'm a, I would immediately fix it. But now they're just all going through. So I'm actually going through contribution records. And I'm checking every single day from the last time I checked every day and I'm, I'm fixing it so that they, you know, I'm, I don't want a disaster at the end of the year with right. their records not complete. So yeah, any way you can make that better for us uh, as you're continuing to, you know, develop stuff would be really appreciated. Yep. Yeah, we are absolutely right on it. We have time for a few more questions. When will you have those written instructions ready? for the duplicate records? I was hoping to have them today. Uh, definitely uh, I'm, by Monday. That'd be great. Okay. Mary Robinson, do you have a question? Yeah. Um, it, is there, um, I mean, a, a way to make it so that you can sort of label who people are in the database? I, I know like if people are in a group, you know, it's, it's more obvious, but like, um, you know, if we want people to know who our current officers are, um, you know, is there a way to make to make that visible and engage? Yeah, so, so I saw your question, put a, a note down there. In, um, in CDM Plus, when you're in list maintenance, uh, you can enable a feature on your groups called detailed tracking. And uh -huh. that is going to uh, let you in, mark a position on someone's enrollment in that group. Um, so if you got a committee or something and you want to mark someone as the uh, treasurer or secretary or chair, uh, you can definitely turn that on. Um, so adding, exposing that and engage makes a lot of sense. Now, being able to see people who necessarily aren't in the group that so-and-so is uh, maybe, um, you know, deputy chair of some committee, that's something that we need to build in a little more of that privacy control before we can turn it on let folks sort of expose what groups they're they're in um, right and i'm just thinking more of like you know like our you know our specific board members that um or like if somebody's an elder if we have like i have like a membership directory group um and so if there's a way to like sort of tag you know, add a title within that so people can see, you know, that so-and-so is the current moderator or whatever. Yeah, so you, they could basically kind of have like a, a, a badge or a, a banner on their, on their right, entry. Yeah. I'm an elder or I'm a vestry member or deacon or what have you. Yeah, that's a, yeah. that's a really good idea. Yeah, I'll put that suggestion down. So uh, not currently, but that's something we will, we will look at adding. Okay, cool, thanks. You're welcome. Badges. Thank you, Mary. Um, <clears throat> I got a message from Westview. They don't have a microphone, but he asked, uh, or she, uh, why did one of the deposits from Stuart Tech say credit instead of deposit, and is there a difference? Um, in terms of like what might show on their bank account? 
Um, there's yeah, a couple sorry. of, yeah, we, we'd probably need to, to look specifically um, with them uh, after the webinar. Um, but there's a couple of, couple of reasons that you would get um, charges uh, to or from your bank account that aren't just from uh, a settled deposit online. Um, if you had a refund, for example, um, that would be withdrawn back out of your account. Um, if you were to, somebody tried to make a donation through ACH and they had insufficient funds, you're going to get a $10 fee from that. Um, there could also be, it might be maybe the monthly fee coming through. Um, the refunds in particular are something that we're wanting to enhance deposit processing just to handle for you so that that, that transaction goes straight into your ledger in CDM Plus. He, he commented, uh, they commented, I don't have a deposit for the amount that says credit. Okay, yeah, so um, I would need to check exactly the stewardship to see um, what that was for, um, but it, it certainly could be, um, could be something along those lines. Occasionally we get folks where there was a, uh, a, a rate was set incorrectly or we, um, you know, something needs to be refunded on the stewardship and those will go back through. Um, to Alex, the bank do you... Contract. You want them to call in the support? Only? Yeah, I'd recommend I'd recommend just just uh, give our support team a call, and that way they can sort of get the exact uh, wording off of it, and, and we can contact stewardship to clarify exactly what that is. All right. Let's see, Bob, do you have a question for us? Yeah, I, uh, we've had some duplicates, and I've been able to. Uh, convert them or switch the duplicate to the original without problem. The only problem I've had is when they've had a reoccurring gift associated with a new giving unit. It wouldn't let me delete it and I had to go through some tech support for them to do it. The, the merging feature you said that's up and coming, will that help resolve that to eliminate uh, not being able to delete a giving unit because of attachment? Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I was assuming that, but I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, that's, that's we're, 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 we're built. There's, there's a lot of uh, pieces that sort of are getting put in place for that. Um, and I can tell you, we're very excited to, to offer you those, those, uh, those tools so you can just take care of it right away. Yeah, um, that's great. Yep. Thank you. Brian, did you have any other comments or questions? Uh, just what I typed there, this actually came in via email while we've been in this webinar. Uh, this is the first time we've had to deal with it. But, and, and I don't have any more details than this yet because I haven't called the person. But the person tried to give with a credit card. Um, they had set up that credit card, but by the time they used it um, and it processed, they had had to cancel that credit card and open a new one. And so the the charge was denied. I don't know where along the lines he was at, you know, if this was a scheduled recurring gift or something. Um, but what do I need to check to what records do I need to check to make sure I, I fix? Would this show up as a contribution for them? Um, would it not? Would I, you know, would it show up in the in the ledger transactions? Uh, just not sure where, where I want to make sure I, I fix everything and don't leave some straggler orphaned out there. Sure. Um, so uh, it, it kind of depends on at what point the, the card was uh, declined or denied. Um, mm -hmm. you know, if with the credit cards, um, we actually wait to verify those funds um, before we proceed making the gift. Um, so, so we should have some confirmation from the, the credit card companies that that card is good to go. Um, now, sometimes, especially if it's a debit card, that can then fail to settle a little bit later because the, the, the credit card companies say, oh yeah, it's good to go. And then they check the bank account, come back and say, whoops, not enough money here. Um, so then that fails. Um, but generally, uh, if, the, if the credit card goes through, then that's gonna get all the way settled into a deposit in your um, into your bank account and pushed into the ledger once you use deposit processing. Um, my guess is that uh, that hasn't happened um, because at that point we've got the, the funds from the credit card company. Um, so do, 
do you have any any uh, any indication from the giver, sort of how they know that the the card was was denied? No, I, you know, I, I don't. That's a okay. good question. So, so yeah, if if the if we're able to sort of start that gift process, and, and this is one of those things that, that we're expecting to to have the system handle a little more automatically, um, what what's most likely is that you'll end up with a contribution, but you'll never actually see that clear into being posted to Ledger. Um, so one thing you might want to do is is just pop over into contribution records and look for those that have a posting status of pending. And if that's been pending uh, for more than a couple of days and you're doing deposit processing, then likely something failed. Um, Terry, would you mind to pull up the documentation site there? Um, there's actually a page that kind of gives you uh, all the, all the walkthrough. So if you'll go and uh, just search for uh, like failed gifts would be fine. So there's a page right there for handling failed gifts and refunds. And this will sort of walk you through the various steps that you might might need to, to take. Um, so uh, you can you may need to reverse the contribution. So you probably want to look to see if there's one there. Um, if the funds have actually settled into your bank account, the only way that those are going to come back out is if you either explicitly refund that transaction or if the uh, donor basically contests that charge with their credit card company, which is financially the worst option because you're going to get dinged a fee for that, um, which is basically where they call up their credit card company and say, I don't know what this is. I'm, I'm re refusing this charge. Um, but if they're getting a message that it was actually denied, um, it's quite possible that there may be a gift or actually nothing gone through at this point. Okay, that's good. All right, thank you. You're welcome. All right, trying to end. There we go. I'm, there you go, Beverly. You had a question. Yes, yeah, just one more question. Back on the um, online directory, I wondered since you described some privacy things in the works, whether you have now or will plan to make some sort of short video that we could put out to our members that would show here's how your information, you know, what your options are. You can publish, not publish it. You can have it listed or unlisted. You can have use your own privacy sections uh, or, you know, to do so that we have something we can share with them that highlights what their options are. That's a great idea. Um, and, I, and if I recall correctly, the way the, the privacy settings uh, sort of how we wrote up that internal story um, was to provide a nice little preview while, while somebody's adjusting those so they can see exactly how their, their profile is going to look for somebody else. Um, but it makes a lot of sense to add a, a, again, sort of a short, you know, 30 second, one minute video to walk people through how to do that. So I'll make a note for that. Well, both, we need it both on the user side, so we know how to set it up, but I'd like one that I could have on the, the participant side that just sort of makes them feel comfortable. Right, exactly. Yeah. That, and that's, 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 that's one thing we would put together something to say, you know, your church has engaged. Um, here's how you can go in and adjust what your privacy settings for the directory uh, are and how those work. Okay, thank you. Beverly, you had another question there too. Um, I probably lost it in the string. Okay, it says, when the wife makes a donation using her phone and entering his, her email, the confirmation goes to his email, the husband. Oh, that's somebody else's question. Oh, that's true life church, not me. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was yours. No. Yeah. True life. We have begun your question. Would you give? <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Um, I have a husband and a wife that share a giving unit on CDM. They both have separate email addresses listed. The husband's the primary person with his email and the wife is listed there as well with her email. When he makes a donation, everything goes fine. He gets confirmation, no problems. When the, the wife, when she makes her donation using her phone, um, she gets uh, the email confirmation goes to his email, not to hers. Gotcha. She, she would like to make a donation without him knowing. Well, kind of. <laughs> okay. 
are they using the same engage account? Um, no, they they would have distinct giving. They would have distinct engage accounts that they each have their own tax number they can use. Okay. Um, but they're sharing a given unit, is what you said. Oh, okay. Right. Um, so so the screen Terry has pulled up here uh, is essentially the the settings for the giving unit that lets you change the primary email address. And right now there's only one. Um, and we use this email address for basically any gift confirmation uh, when one's given or or recurring gift fires. Um, in in this scenario, what you could do today is give them separate giving units. Um, and that would definitely segregate their their email confirmations and their giving. Um, and that would mean that 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 each of them would get their own statements for their giving, right? Correct. Okay. That's correct. Right. Yeah, that would okay. be the that that would be kind of how to structure it today. Okay. Would that be something that can be fixed? <laughs> um, so, so I, I guess the, we need to think about this a little bit more in the scenario of a text-based gift specifically. Um, a part of the issue is you could have however many email addresses you want on your individual record. The texting identifies your individual record in the system, and from there we go over to your giver and do all of the all of the gift. So the gift is getting uh, confirmation back to the, this email address on the giver. Um, it certainly uh, could work to be able to, to have multiple email addresses checked here so they would both get a notification um, because it's to their joint giving. Um, does it sound like that's what they would want or did they really want this to just be independent? You know, I mean, you know, their marriage is good. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> sure, sure. So it would be okay, but you know, there might be husbands and wives that don't want to know what you which either other one is giving, you know. <laughs> right. And and we've actually um we've actually run into situations in the past where there where there was uh some some contest in terms of knowing who is making donations and so on, and we need to track down sort of who changed this setting right here and when um uh while trying to hopefully stay out of uh, all all the stickiness of the situation exactly um, but uh yeah i mean the 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 in, in this instance the the wife is going to get a confirmation of the gift um back to her her cell phone or back back via text to say that goes through mm -hmm. um so so yeah i i, I definitely um yeah it's something i think we need to think about a little bit more so, um so Alex, I, I think I, I I think I looked at this incorrectly too. So what you're saying is, if if I have if I go in and I create a an engage account, right, mm -hmm. and I go under this profile here and I set uh, my primary email to be Big Hunter, right? Okay. And then my wife goes in and she creates an engage account and she goes under her profile and change and makes the primary email Andy Sue. Has uh -huh. that now changed the primary email for Big Hunter? Yes. Because you're uh -huh. not you're not changing that this this profile is not your profile over under your personal engage account. This is the profile for the giving unit. Oh I didn't I I learned something today. Okay. Right. But that that may be the the key thing, uh, and and I say that. But then the phone number for text giving right below it that is linked directly to your individual record. Um, so yeah, it might be a might be a question. We also because um, I would have assumed that it would go to whichever one I selected since yeah. I had my own account. Well, that's what we assumed too, and uh, this has happened twice to this couple, and. Um, the wife would prefer it not to happen that way. <laughs> sure. Yeah, and, and as it stands today, the the, be, the the cleanest thing to do would simply be to to put her own giving unit in there, and that way she she makes all her giving. She's you know receipted and notified for all her giving, and and that's that. Uh, and then they can combine it as as needed uh, if they're filing their taxes jointly or so on. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, something to think about. Yeah, definitely. That's kind of a Good one to sleep on. Yeah, really. Thank you. <laughs> You're Appreciate welcome. it. <laughs>
Chris, I see this question here from Pastor Greg uh, about a giving unit you gave by text. And it says the giving unit doesn't exist and they're listed as a as pending giving unit in deposit processing. So what likely uh, needs to happen there is, is when you make your first gift by text, um, if the system doesn't recognize your, your phone number, uh, it's gonna send you a link to, to go to engage and make that gift, uh, which is where you'll put in your, your payment information and so on. Uh, once you finish making that gift, uh, engage will ask, do you wanna create an account? This will make it easy for you to do text giving, recurring giving, so on and so forth. Um, the scenario that you're describing suggests they did not create an account. At that point, they just made a gift as a guest. So we're, we're not saving their, their uh, cell phone number at that point. Um, if they click yes to create an account, that's gonna set them up as an individual uh, uh, giving you an address, save all of that information with their phone number, and then they can do gift, get, uh, gift straight from text giving at that point. Um, so that's, that, that's basically what you need to do is once somebody finishes making a text gift, encourage them to always create that account. Uh, and that way they'll be able to go back and we've, we've got their payment information saved and everything else uh, for them to be able to make the gifts directly from uh, their, their messaging app. Okay, I, I have one, one comment, would that be okay? Yeah, absolutely. Um, he already has a giving unit in CDM that uh, from many years ago. But when I typed in his, when I typed in his uh, giving unit, it says that it doesn't exist. And I know that it does exist because he's got contributions in it. And so that's that's really what's got me hung up a little bit. Gotcha. On that. Okay. Um, yeah, it sounds like um, maybe what you want to do is go through this process to sort of merge the accounts together that were created. Um, that's the, the documentation that, that Terry is putting together will be out early next week. Um, one thing that's important about that, um, right now, uh, what, if somebody creates an account, their online credentials um, are on their individual record. You can transfer those to, to an existing individual. Um, in CDM Plus 11.0, the, giving, the number for text giving does not transfer, but when you use 11.1, and we just put the beta out for that last week. Um, that's the number that we they use for text giving is transferred with those credentials. Um, so that'll allow that that uh, text giving to to continue. If it okay. doesn't transfer, if you're on the current version, uh, at least it'll have their their username and so on. And after it, they would do one more gift through Engage, and then it would save their their text number, their cell phone number, and they're good to go. Okay, one more comment. I went to his individual record and it doesn't show any online credentials in his okay. individual record. Does it, did, do you have multiple individual records for him? No, he's, you know, he's, his name only shows up in our database one time. Yeah. So, so, it's created an account. Yeah. And, and you said that it, uh, you, that he's listed under the, the pending giving under process yeah. pending contributions. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that means that it's a guest gift and, and, and he did not create an account. Uh, okay, so I, I can't assign that to, a, I'd have to assign his gifts to maybe like a visitor gift and then go in and transfer that back but to you his should regular be, giving unit. You should be able to find his giving unit, I mean, in process pending. But is that what you, is that what you're saying? Where you went to search for his giving unit, and, and it wasn't, you, not, and you didn't find I, it. I went to uh, I went to the address record, and I looked on the giving unit, and uh, it's got a giving unit there that he's had for many years. But when I put that when I put that giving unit number into the um, deposit processing part, like what uh, I'm doing uh, here. Pardon. Like what I'm doing here on the screen with the. Yes. Yes, when I when I put when I put it uh, when I put his uh, giving unit there, it says that that unit does not exist. Okay, that'd be a good one. Uh, probably give our support team a call, and what yeah, okay. we can do is pull up that address record where that giving unit is, and pull yeah. up process pending contributions, and see why those why it isn't finding that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it very much. Thanks for your presentation today. It's very good. Right, You're very welcome. Well, <clears throat>
<clears throat> that might be our last question. There's a comment from Ruth there at the bottom, and I think it was relating to a previous question. Yes. Yeah. Uh, with the, the married couple doing touching. Yeah, right. Um, if anybody else has any questions, now's your chance. Uh, just so you know, I know we still got a few here. Uh, we'll send out a recording of the webinar. Uh, we'll also send out a copy of the slides that Terry was using uh, that lists uh, in particular some of those upcoming enhancements. I also wanted to mention that uh, we still have a six month free data hosting if you're not on that, that expires on May 31st. Uh, get six data is the promo code to use if you call and then we also are if you're not on engage which sounds like most folks are but if you aren't we're doing three months free uh, if you sign up for engage now and that is uh, promo code three free all right very good well we certainly appreciate everyone's time today we hope you all are are staying healthy staying sane <laughs> staying safe um, please let us know if there's anything else we can do to help uh, we appreciate your time um, we'll stick around for just another minute or two uh, in case there's any last minute questions. But uh, otherwise, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Have a great weekend and uh, God bless you all.